いずれどいつもこいつも一網打尽だ話を気が足らねえこっちに消えたれやイン・オブ・イヴォーイズ・ア・1971ジュダイケキ・オー・ジャパニーズ・ピリオド・ピース・ドラマ。アニケーション・エン・ノー・コバヤシ・アニケーション・エン・ノー・コバヤシ・アニ
So now let's get into the characters. So one character that enters the inn is Tommy Juro. And he's a young man who's escaping from the police just because he ran off without paying for his sake. And he's initially turned away, but after they see that he's wounded, the innkeeper's daughter takes him in and treats him. And we find out that his fiance had been sold and that he had stolen money from his employer to buy her back, but he spent all the money he could on the search. And he really becomes the main catalyst of the story. Also inside the inn, we have the most dangerous and respected people. <laughs> There's Sada the Indifferent, that's his title, and he's played by Tatsuya Nakadai. And we find out that he killed a woman who may or may not have been his mother. It's more so implied that it was just based on how he's acting. There's also Yohai, the Living Buddha, that's his title. He's played by Kai Sato. And there are several other characters that are even more eccentric. But a second surprise big name actor is the unnamed character played by Shintaro Katsu. And the reason for him being there is pretty great. He first shows up but then gets thrown out, but then he returns. And he's told that they don't serve strangers. And he replies, and it's pretty logical, and he says that since they have thrown him out already, he's no longer a stranger. And so they just shrug and they let him stay. And he's just a drunk. It seems like all he does is just sit by himself in a corner, he doesn't talk to anyone, and he just tries to drink himself to death every day. It's a pretty unique role for Katsu, yet somehow it works. And eventually their big smuggling operation goes wrong. And the inn is now surrounded by an army of officers. And they're all carrying lanterns. And this is what I meant by when I said this is the most beautiful police raid ever filmed. We just see hundreds of floating lanterns all swarming this one island. And I'm not going to spoil it because it is quite intense. And it is worth seeing. And Kobayashi is just excellent at making memorable endings. You can't forget Harakiri's, that's an amazing ending. Also Samurai Rebellion is just one of my favorite endings in any film. But I will say, this ending, while it does pay off, it still isn't as good as those other two films. If it was, I have a feeling this film would be a lot more famous. But that's kind of how I sum this film up. The movie is excellent in every way. And yet it still feels like something of a letdown. And when you look at Kobayashi from Black River to Samurai Rebellion, he really produced nothing but masterpieces. But those films also had something else to them. There was something beneath the surface. A powerful message of Japanese history and society. But here, we don't really seem to have that same underlying message about society like those other two films. But when you look at it, practically any other director of this era, in Japan or any other country, I feel like this film would have been a definite high in any filmmaker's catalog. But a film from Kobayashi, and just because he's so good, at the end of the day we feel kind of empty. But this is more a problem from us than him. A movie is a movie and it must be judged on its own. And it shouldn't be compared to a director's other films. And a great director should not be criticized just for making a very very good movie. Instead of the greatest thing ever. And I feel like practically any other filmmaker would be proud to have made this. And from the sound to just the visuals, this is definitely the kind of old school samurai movie feeling that I love. Tur Takamitsu returns and his music is great and haunting as always. And it really just helps to keep you on the edge. Shh. 
There's also that sort of spooky, surreal feeling that we got from other old school Japanese films like Onibaba. And that could be because of the setting. It's an isolated small island that's just surrounded by swamp. And I've also noticed that I tend to like films that take place in just one location. I feel like if a movie could pull that off, then it's just really good. And I really like how this film chose to do that. It makes it feel unique. And this film really was like the end of that old school black and white samurai era that we used to get. And I would say that I couldn't picture this movie in color, but such a version does exist. And like I said before, I was given a second film too. And it's titled Isle of Evil. It's also known as The Law of Hell, 1982. So this is a color remake of Inn of Evil. And this film also stars Tatsuya Nakadai. But it's interesting because in this film, he's in a different role. This time, he's the orchestrator of the smuggling business. And I would do a separate review on this film, but it technically is just the same story as the original. Once again, there's just an illegal trade that's being carried out under the blind eye of a corrupt police official. And this is all going down in the Serenity Inn like before. And what's kind of interesting is Tatsuya Nakadai's wife, Ryu Tomoe, she's the screenwriter for both versions. And the music in this version is done by Sato Masuro, and he really does a good job at giving it a suspenseful tone. But of course it doesn't match Turu Takamitsu. And they also thought Ryu Dasuke, he did a good job as Sada the Indifferent in this version. <sighs> and I will say that this is a made for television movie. And so obviously it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the black and white original. But I mean that's kind of obvious, I mean that film was done by Kobayashi and this one's made for television. And even though this film is in color, for some reason they just used really dull colors. So there really wasn't any advantage to having it. It looks so much better in black and white. And it's also 30 minutes shorter than the original. And because of that, it seemed like it lacked a lot of the deepness to the overall story. It seemed somewhat rushed. And the acting too isn't as good as the original. I mean, Nakadai is great like always, but the acting in the original just seemed so much more intense. But I don't consider this movie to be bad in any way. It kind of just gets hurt by the original being better and made by Kobayashi. But still, it does make a good companion film alongside the original. And I really did enjoy watching them back to back. It really allowed you to understand the story even better. And it was just nice seeing Tatsuya Nakadai again in this film. But in addition to also starring Tatsuya Nakadai, the television version also has a young Koji Yakusho. And he's currently just one of Japan's biggest actors. And I especially just love that actor in Kiyoshi Kurosawa films like Cure. Definitely check those ones out. Anyway, have you seen these films? What did you think? Let me know in the comments. And both films are on SamuraiDVD.com. Don't forget to use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. And like always, thanks for watching.